everyone. Welcome to Carnivorous Plans Hub. Today you are probably here because you impulsively bought a Venus flytrap from a store like Walmart or Lowe's and you're in a hurry to learn how to take care of it. Great news, you are in the right place. If you're like me and 95% of other first-time carnivorous plant owners, you probably bought your first fly trap, brought it home, immediately stuck a bug in his trap and thought, wow, that's really cool. You then gave it some tap water, put it in your windowsill, and it died. Now you have a second one and you need some help. Or you brought the fly trap home, assumed it was a tropical exotic plant, went on Amazon and bought a fancy terrarium because tropical means high humidity, right? Then you ended up on the Satire Facebook page, is that a Venus fly trap in a terrarium? I'm going to show you how to not be the butt of their joke. Don't worry, I'm here to help. I'm going to give you the complete Venus flytrap care guide in under 10 minutes. And if you don't believe me, just check out my fancy timer there in the lower left hand corner ticking away to help keep me accountable. Keep in mind most of the topics that I'm talking about today I have dedicated videos for. If you have questions, check the description. I probably have a video with more info about that subject. Throw your question in the comments if not and I'll do my best to get to it. Alrighty then, are you ready? I thought you'd never ask. The very first thing that I want you to do is to pull it out of its little plastic death trap and throw it away. Completely ignore the instructions on the back on how to give care for this plant because 99% of the time they're completely incorrect. Next, go to the link in the upper left hand corner right there and download your free plant tracker and Venus flytrap care sheet. All right, let's get started by talking about watering. Venus flytraps grow naturally in areas that lack nutrients in their soil or water. Tap water is going to be your enemy. It has nutrients and minerals that will burn the roots of a Venus flytrap and eventually kill them. Distilled, reverse osmosis, or rainwater are your best and most readily available options. This water will lack the minerals and nutrients that lead to dead fly traps. You can get distilled water by the gallon in most grocery or one-stop shop stores. You're going to want to get a TDS meter. This will show you the dissolved solids in your water. You need this to read under 50 parts per million to be safe. If you can't find distilled water, you can filter your tap water with a zero water pitcher. You can't just get any water filtration system like a Brita. These do not filter the minerals out. You must get a zero water pitcher. These also come with a TDS meter to measure your water. There's a link in the description below, plus a more in-depth video about zero water pitchers. Venus fly traps like water down by the roots, but not so much up at the top by the rhizome. Keeping them soaking wet for a long time can result in crown rot. I recommend tray watering so water is constantly by the roots, but not always up at the top. If temperatures are above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, I recommend keeping a tray of water full. The hot temperatures will keep the water low and won't allow the plant to become too soggy. If your temps are below 80 degrees Fahrenheit, keep an eye on the plant. Allow the tray to go dry for a day or two before adding more water. Never let the plant dry out more than an inch or so below the surface. Stick your finger in the substrate to test to see how wet it is below the surface. Know the weight of your pot. This can be the easiest way to determine if your plant needs water or not. All right, let's talk about lighting. The best conditions for your Venus flytrap with lighting is full sun. When you bring them home, you want to acclimate them to full sun slowly. Start with a few hours, then move up as the plant stays healthy. If your plant turns brown and black in the sun, it's likely because it's getting burnt from too much sun too quickly. Keep doing this until the plant is utilizing full sun. They almost can't get enough. If you live in extremely hot temps like Arizona or Texas, you may want to give them morning cooler sun, then place a shade cloth over them in the afternoon. Indoor lighting. It's harder to grow them inside as you need a strong grow light. Do not put them in a window. In most cases, a window sun will not be enough. If the leaves on your Venus flytrap are really wide and the traps are really small, this is probably due to light starvation. I recommend the Sansi 36 watt grow light for a single plant. There's also a nice 100 watt grow light you can get if you need light for, a, a, for more Venus flytraps than just your one. You should keep them in the light for a minimum of 12 hours every day. It's always best to keep them in full sun, but indoor lighting is possible with a strong enough grow light. I have some links in the description for some recommended grow lights. Real quick before we move on to feeding, I want to show you how you can get your hands on some really incredible carnivorous plants and Venus flytrap cultivars. I'm super pumped about teaming up with California carnivores. They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery you fall in love with. On top of that, they've also been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter CP Hub at checkout. That's CP Hub. Head on over and pick out yourself a new carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, let's talk about feeding. If you keep your Venus flytrap outside in full sun, feeding won't be an issue. They are amazing natural hunters and will get their fill of flies and other insects. They mostly just need sun and water and the bugs are more like fertilizer. You can mostly feed your Venus flytrap as much as you want, 
Fly traps outside often have every trap closed with a bug in it. I have a video showing you the correct method to feed them dead bugs. Don't do this without watching that video first as there's a method that needs to be followed. Try to only feed softer insects like flies. Avoid hard shell beetles or insects that are too soft like earthworms. They can rot that trap and be harmful to the plant. The fly trap will close, release the digestive enzymes, and reopen after a week or so to eat more bugs. All right, let's talk about dormancy. One of the things that most people get completely wrong. These are temperate plants and they need cold dormancy period. You want to keep your plant between 30 and 50 degrees for about a 12 to 16 week period, usually in the winter time. Around 50 degrees, they are still growing a bit and might need a few hours of light in the day. If they're 40 degrees or under, you can probably mostly eliminate any light requirements. If kept outside, make sure to cover them up with some kind of winter cloth for plants and insulate with pine needles. They can be in the freezing temperatures but need to be insulated to survive winters of harsher cold weather. If you have an unheated garage or a room in your home, this is probably your best option. Please see the video below in the description for more detailed explanation on dormancy. Dormancy is one of the trickier parts of Venus flytrap care to get right, so I do strongly recommend to watch that video so that you could learn more about Venus flytrap dormancy. If you're finding this video useful, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying so hard to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday. You can support my dream by using the thanks button below the video and leave a monetary contribution. Don't want to fork over the hard-earned cash? I totally get it. Just like the video, sub to my channel, watch the video all the way to the end, or leave a comment. All those things really, really, really help me out. You can also download my free plant tracker with the Venus Flytrap Care Sheet at the top left of this video. It's totally free. Thank you so much for supporting my dream. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, let's talk about substrate or soil. Substrate is the same as water. You need something with no additives. That includes no fertilizer, nutrients, or minerals. Peat moss and perlite is one of the most common mixes. Three parts peat moss to one part perlite. If you have access to silica sand, you can also add one part sand, but it's not 100% necessary. Peat and perlite will work. I recommend rinsing the peat moss prior to using it, and then use your TDS meter to measure the runoff water. If it's showing below 50 ppm, you're probably okay. If above 50 ppm, continue to flush the peat moss with distilled water. You can also use long fiber sphagnum moss as a substrate. I have a great video that breaks down the pros and the cons of both peat moss and lung fibrous sphagnum moss. That is in the description as well. Next, we need to talk about pots or planters. Make sure that the planter that you're using is a resin or a plastic. Clay or terracotta pots can leach harmful minerals and sap the water away from the plant. You're probably okay with a clay pot as long as it's been treated with a glaze. Make sure that the planter or pot that you have has holes in the bottom to allow water to flow out the bottom. Without holes, you will not be able to tray water or flush the plant from the top. Try to avoid dark colors as they can become too hot in full sun, and always avoid glass as it will magnify the sun and burn your roots. Try to use a pot that's at least 4 inches deep. 6 inches or more is better, as Venus flytrap roots can really grow long. Try to avoid anything under 4 inches tall for an adult-sized Venus flytrap. The wider your planter is, the longer it will retain water, and the more insulated that your roots will be in the wintertime in the harsh cold. Quick tip, lightning round. Do not put your Venus flytrap in a terrarium. They are native to North Carolina, which experiences a warm summer and a cold winter. They are not tropical. They need a winter dormancy and it's hard to give them that in a terrarium. Humidity is not necessary. It probably doesn't really hurt, it's just not needed. Do not put your Venus flytrap in a windowsill. This is the most common mistake that I see. It may live for a while, but most windows filter out too much UV and won't provide enough of what the plant needs. It's a slow death, but almost always ends that way. They need to be repotted once a year or two. Try to do this during dormancy as it's less impactful to the plant. I have a detailed video showing you exactly how to repot. Bookmark it and come back later when it's time for you to repot. If you got a plant from a big box store and the substrate doesn't seem great, I recommend repotting it right away. You can also top water with distilled water, measure the runoff, and see if it's above 50 ppm. If it is above 50 ppm, you definitely want to either flush that plant or repot it right away. Make sure that you allow your plant to acclimate to its new pot or area before you try feeding it flies. Wait until it seems strong and healthy with new growth coming up, then it's time for you to go ahead and start feeding it flies if you want. If you see a flower stalk popping up, it's probably best to just cut it off. It sucks the life out of the plant and can be a sign of it dying. All energy is being diverted to carry on its life and it puts all that energy into the flower stalk. You can propagate these cuttings into new baby plants and you guessed it, I have a video about cutting flower stalks and how to propagate them right down in the description. All right, you're now on your way to becoming a pro Venus flytrap caregiver. If you want more detailed care guide, check out the video that just popped up right there. It's a long version of what we just went over. Thank you so much for checking this video out. Make sure to like and sub, throw a question in the comments if you need some additional help. I can't wait to catch you guys in my next video. Bye.